back to another web development with Flask tutorial. My name is Ronak Vyas and this video is a collaboration with Programming Knowledge. Uh, in the previous videos, we talked about how we can set up a Hello World function, uh, Hello World app using Flask. We also talked about how we can uh, use templates and template inheritance uh, in Flask. Uh, and using template inheritance, we were able to build a nav bar. Uh, the code for which is common for all the web pages but it only has one base .html. Uh, in this video we'll talk about how users can input uh, their data into a form and we will be using that uh, concept uh, to build a sign up and login page so let's go and just make sure our uh, web app is up and running so we use flask run and let's just see that our website is up and running yes and it is so we'll get to the sign up and login part later but our website is up and running and this is how it looked like and now uh, before we jump on to building the sign up and login page uh, we have to talk about uh, something called as http requests and the two very famous and very common http requests are get and post so the get method is when uh, the user wants to fetch something from the web server, uh, some information from the web server. So when we refresh uh, the web page, we see that uh, the web app has performed a get request where it gets all the code from the server and displays us the code through the web browser. And post is when the user uh, sends some information to the web server. So uh, when a user wants to sign up or log in, it sends its information to the web server, which is then stored into a database. Uh, which we'll talk about in a future video but uh, the main uh, function of a post request is that the user can send information to the server so using these two uh, http requests we are going to build up the next part of our uh, tutorial which is how to build the sign up and login page so we will not be adding the entire user, user authentication features today uh, we'll only talk about how we can send information from the user back to the server and then see how that happens and we'll also set up some ui for that code so that we can uh, make sure that the project is also up and running as we learn the concepts. So let's get started. Now uh, to build uh, a sign up or login form, we need uh, a form in our website. So uh, as I did it for the nav bar, I'm going to go to bootstrap again and uh, take up the first form here, which is what we need. And we'll be using these forms in our sign up and login pages and use them for later use as well. So these are the forms, the link is in the description uh, and the code for this video is also in the description in the GitHub uh, repository. Uh, please, uh, you can fork uh, the repo and clone the repo uh, on GitHub and use it as you feel like. So now uh, I have copied this code and I have uh, pasted this in our templates for sign up. Let's see sign up first. We have talked about how a template inheritance works uh, in the previous video and how we can also override it uh, with our content uh, now here is our code for sign up and login so for sign up uh, this is the bootstrap classes we have a name we have an email address password and sign up uh, they you can also add another functionality where the user can type the password again to confirm the password and then sign up and after this uh, the information of the user is sent back to the server which we will we'll be focusing on today so this is how the uh, HTML looks like We'll talk about uh, the form methods uh, in a minute, but uh, let's actually see how this works. So we have the HTML file and now we need a way to actually extract that information from the HTML pages, uh, from the HTML file uh, when a user actually clicks on the sign up button. So let's see how we can do that. And the mechanism for the sign up.html is under auth as you remember here. Now, uh, by default, this uh, uses the get request, as you can see here. And now, when a user wants to send some information to the web, web server, we have a post request. Now, uh, in uh, many tutorials, you see that uh, the developer, the programmer, handles both the get and the post request in one single function. But just to make this make uh, the functions really clear and concise, we'll be having another function, which is called a sign up post. And only that function will handle all the sign up part uh, regarding the post request. So let's just see how it looks like. So we'll have a route again. So it's going to be sign up because we'll be using that. Because the 
user a sense of information back to the sign up route and now since this is going to be a post request we can add a HTTP method here so methods equal to post you can also add get but that is by default so we'll just be showing post for now so we have our sign up route ready and now let's have a sign up post function now we have a sign up post now we need a few libraries uh, to build this post function so first we need something called as request and we need something called redirect we'll talk about what these mean uh, in a bit now let's see how the mechanism works so uh, we have a form HTML tag here so the form tag handles all the information that is being sent back to the web server uh, the method is post as we're going to send a post request uh, the action uh, or the uh, route which has to open up or to which the information has to be sent back is the sign up route so now here uh, we have our inputs so the input for name uh, and we make sure that the ID and the name is also given inside the input because we'll be accessing uh, the content of that input using the name tags so give it an ID give it a name uh, all of this is from the bootstrap class here uh, as you can see uh, label input type class placeholder ID etc just add another name here for each and every input uh, tag so we have the name we have the email address with the name email the password with the name password and when we give the type as password it hides the uh, text in the password format now uh, when the user clicks on sign up uh, which is the type submit uh, what happens behind the scene is that all the information uh, is sent back to the sign up route and it's a post request so all the information comes back to this function and now we need a way to access that fun access those data right so first it access the email we use the request library which has the form function and we get the email similarly we get two other things we get the name of the user which is inside the name name and also the password now in this way uh, we have collected the email name and password uh, from sign up html page and we can do whatever with it for now uh, in the future videos, we're going to take up these names and then uh, put them inside a database uh, in SQLite. But for now, I'm just going to display uh, the, just to make sure that the post request is working, I'm going to display that in the terminal and see whether we're able to get this or not. And also when we set up user, user authentication, we're going to hash the password and then store the hash, not the actual password, so that uh, there are no security breaches in our web application. So now that we have this, Let's just print them out in the terminals. We have the email, name, and password. And uh, let's just assume that this has been sent to the database. So now that it has been sent to the database, we have to redirect the user or direct the user to the login page because they have signed up now and they can log in. So we use the redirect function. So the redirect function is where you can directly send the user to any page you want. So we use the redirect function. Inside that we have a URL for because we want to make sure that we are following the notion to org.login. Now using the request library, we get the email name and password which has been sent back to this function, sign up post. Uh, it handles the post request. And once the post has been sent back to this function, we redirect to the login page because once the user has signed up, they can log in now. So we'll set up the login page similarly in a bit, but let's see whether this works or not. So we can refresh this. We can go to the sign up page and see how our sign up page looks like. So we have the sign up name, address. Uh, you can add another field for confirming the password and sign up. And once you click on sign up, it goes to the sign up post function here. So it has the method post and has the route sign up. We get the email name password and then we print the password in the terminal here, not on the web page because we're going to do that later in the videos. And then we redirect our user to the login page. 
So let's close our application, run it again to make sure that we can do it now. Let's refresh, everything is stable. And let's say we have a John Doe who wants to sign up. So John Doe at gmail.com and the password also John Doe and sign up. Now, as you can see, when we clicked on sign up, we went back to the login page and when you see here, we are able to see our email name and password. So in this way, you can actually send user data from a form, from an HTML form here to our Flask function, uh, send it back to the server and then we can do whatever we want with those information. So for our use case, we're going to store them into a database. And while we do that, we also hash the password so that uh, there are no security breaches. Now, similarly, let's uh, make the login page. So again, I use the forms uh, code for my login.html page, which you can see here, the login email address, password, and remember me. So we'll see how we can set this up later. And again, we have the name as email, the password as password, and for remember B, we have the remember ID. So now that we have this, let's just give it a name, remember as well, while we're at it. And now let's see how we can write the code. So the code is going to be exactly similar. We have a login post. Before that, we set our route. So auto.route goes to login again. And the methods is post. And now once a user logs in, we have we want to re redirect them back to the account page, not the home page, because I want the user to see its name and the account, which I will set up in the next video. But so what we do is we return, redirect the URL, and we do that to main.profile, if I'm right. So let's just see our main, and we have the profile, yes. So we send it back to the profile and now here what we do is we take the email from request.form.get and we get our password Sorry about that. and let's go back to this, yes that was the issue. And let's print our email and password as well to make sure that we have actually uh, got them back on the server using the post request. So now, again, the same format. We have the login action. The method is post. We use a form. The form has the ID and name as email, the password as well, and for the input type. Now, when we click on login, we also type submit. It goes back to the login action, but a post. So it goes to this function and we extract the email and password using the request library. We print those email and password and then we redirect the user back to the profile page. So let's see how this works. We close the port and it again. Now let's go back. Sign up page is looking good. Login also looks good. So we have John Doe. Or it is take Ronak, my name. And sorry, the email has to be run at gmail.com. That's not my actual email, but we have a password on one to three. We press login. And as you can see, we went back to the profile page. And here, my email ID and password is not my actual password and ID. They have been shown here on the terminal. So clearly, this works. And now we can use this whenever you want to build up our actual sign up and login page. So again, to just reiterate on what we have done here, let's go to the sign up page again and see what just happened. We use the form to actually input some data from the user here. Then that data using uh, had sent back to the sign up page, sign up route in a post format. And here in the post function, we get that email and everything back from the user. We print them or we store them in a database in the next video.
and then we redirect the user back to the login page because they have signed up now. Coming to the login feature, we go to the login HTML page, we click on submit, we go to the login route with the method post, which is right here. And again, we take the email and password. And here, in the next video, we're going to check the email, uh, if it exists in the database. And if it does, then we're going to log in the user. So we'll be adding those functionalities later. But again, we are able to actually get the information from the user using a form. This is how uh, we can uh, have users input their data into a form and then send the information back to the server using an HTTP POST request. So in the next video, we'll talk about how we can show our data or pass our data uh, or Python code from our uh, user, from our functions, uh, from our Python code to HTML code. So now when a user uh, logs in with the email and password, we're going to show his email ID here on the account page that you know this is the person who has just logged in. So we can do this as well and this will be done in the next uh, video. So yeah, thank you for watching guys.